What's up everyone, I'm Mike, the hi-fi fanatic behind Audio Architects. For those who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. If you're a first-timer and love speakers, amplifiers, CD players, streamers, subwoofers, headphones, uh, music in general, <laughs> all things audio, you're in the right place. It would be best if you stuck around for just a little bit because I will dive into a touchy subject on the differences between vintage and modern audio gear and which one would be right for you. Stay tuned. In most cases, people tend to gravitate towards the gear they can afford, giving them the sound they enjoy. Simple. Some are collectors and the unique desirability of a vintage piece of equipment is enticing. As each day passes, more and more people are throwing out their vintage gear to purchase new, making it more and more scarce, rare, and inevitably expensive due to its rarity. Suppose you're a serious collector. I'm a serious collector with certain things, so I know how this goes. And the piece you find is in perfect working order and physically pristine. In that case, it's my opinion most audiophiles would rather keep an interesting piece of vintage gear than a modern piece, which in the mass market from the mid-fi sector, they start to kind of look and perform like one another. However, not all vintage pieces are perfect gems. Gear from the 70s and 80s is just worn and in need of maintenance. Whether it's an you know, electrolytic cap, uh, DC operated relays, or moving mechanisms like a CD tray they eventually wear. Like classic cars, the design and technology in the vintage pieces are much more simplistic, and there are decades of tutorials, manuals, and white papers on these different types of gear. If you're the least bit handy with this type of stuff, you could probably do the work yourself. Worst case, there's always a YouTube video about, it, you know, about the subject that, that will walk you through most of the issues that can manifest themselves. If you're not necessarily mechanically inclined, this could become an expensive hobby because of the reliability of a classic product. Yes, I believe in the long run, the dependability is much better than a product of today. Still, nevertheless, you will be visiting your repair shop more often than you would like to if you had purchased a you know fresh new piece of gear. Good luck fixing a new piece of equipment though, unless you're uh, you know an electronic engineer, electric engineer. You know I've opened these cases up, and you need a degree in electrical engineering to even diagnose an issue. I suppose this is where warranties come into play. I have gone through many forums on the subject and it seems uh, people wish they could just buy a brand new 2022 made Techniques or Sensui 1970s or 1980s amplifier. That makes sense. For them, it would be it would be worth what many brands are charging for the high-end products of today. When I got started in audio many moons ago, I pieced it together from gear I found at my local thrift stores. Um, I, I wasn't a millionaire. I ran a small techniques integrated amplifier with a pair of Kenwood floor standers, the ones with a 12 inch bass driver. I still to this day haven't replicated that sound, which I could only describe as my own personal audio nirvana. I never had a problem with the techniques and I sold it later on, which I truly regret. The speakers I gave to a friend of mine since I was moving out of state, couldn't take them with me, they were too big. That's what happens to vintage audio. It makes its rounds. You know, had I known what I know now, uh, right here would be their forever home. <laughs> it's fascinating and enchanting to hear the different sound signatures of particular brands and models of the past eras of hi-fi. I recently bought a CD player, it's right, it's actually right there. I recently bought a CD player from 1988, the Magnavox CDB473, which comes with the TDA1541 DAC, which is a well-respected DAC for audiophiles and units featuring this DAC are very sought after. I was lucky, I paid 100 bucks for this unit on eBay, and to be honest, it sounds better than several units of today that I have tested. Yeah, it's a bit beat up, and it smells like an old garage, and it isn't the quietest when it opens and closes, but the sound quality completely forgives all of that. However, today's objective is to figure out what route is best for you. My suggestion, both. You want the new technology that goes into today's DAC, streamers, CD players, and amplifiers. You want the reliability, the warranty, and the peace of mind knowing that you will have a working system for some time to come. 
As technology evolves, we are spiraling headfirst into the digital revolution. As much as I fight it, I fight it with my CD resurgence initiative. But you want to be future-proofed. However, there is a place in your bedroom, office, library, I don't know how big your house is, uh, but there is that special place for a classic vintage setup. Nothing crazy. Well, if you can afford crazy, then go full bore by all means. But as I said before, visit your local thrift shops, check out Hi-Fi Shark, eBay, Facebook, Marketplace. There are plenty of places to find your dream setup of the past. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of money. You don't have to do it all at once. There really is something so satisfying about the hunt itself. It could take years to find the right match, but once you do, you will have that same audio nirvana I experienced so many years ago with that first system I put together. Thank you all for joining me. If you are already subscribed, thank you. I have an online shop where you can actually purchase audio related tees, hoodies, and merchandise to help support the channel. You know, that way you get something out of it too. <laughs> if you are new to the channel and you like it so far, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. And I would love for you to end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending a little bit of your day with me. Take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.